Hey class, and so we're back um, for this model. I ended up um, cheating a little bit. So basically what I did was go to mode and in bake mesh maps, I ended up baking the high poly mesh onto itself. So I had to create a new file um, using the high poly mesh, the underscore high, and then clicking this use poly, low poly mesh as high poly mesh. So if you click that button, it will bake to itself and it will give you a very nice high quality mesh. Um, if you are using this for a video game, I do encourage you to make sure, go back and forth to Maya and try and get those um, models really close so that you can bake the high onto the low. But in this case, um, I did just use the high poly mesh on the high poly mesh. And you can see what a nice um, bake mode I get out of it. So on the left is the model, on the right is our UVs, um, our UV shells, and this is just like a nice flat texture view. If you want to change this view, let's just go to 3D only on the right here. And then I just wanted to show you um, how to add a stylized texture to your model. So what do I mean when I mean stylized? So if you see this um, really nice Cinema 4D model, basically a stylized texture is made up of five different layers in the texture. The first is an overall medium um, gray texture or any kind of base color for your model. Um, next, there is an ambient occlusion layer. So ambient occlusion is the lighting that goes inside of the cracks or anywhere where we have um, ambient lighting that's either shown or not shown. Um, we're going to add some details for that. Next, um, edge highlights. So in stylized modeling and stylized textures in particular, there are generally um, nice highlights along the edges and it gives it that pop. Um, then we have a top to bottom color gradient. So you can see that this model is generally lighter on top and darker at the bottom. And sometimes this does create a problem if your spaceship is going to be flipping around um, and wanting to have equal lighting on both sides. And then the last layer that we're gonna be adding is a, a baked stylized lighting, which also may have issues if your spaceship is flipping around. But let's take a look at the effects that they create and what goes into a stylized texture. Okay, so let's create our first layer. Um, we're gonna add a fill layer. So the fill layer is the little paint bucket layer on the right hand side here. If you can't for see if you can't see your layers menu by any chance, go to window and either reset UI or you could also go to views and add layers to the right here. All right, so um, we're gonna use the paint bucket, which is going to add an all over color rather than the paintbrush layer, which only applies color where we actually use a paintbrush. So let's add this, click on the paint bucket and you can see I've got a new fill layer. I'm gonna double click it and rename this base color. And I'm going to click on the actual color tab here and scroll on down in my properties menu and go to the actual base color. So here's where we can apply um, a new color for this. So I'm gonna pick, this is gonna be like an overall, kind of like an army green color. I generally find for my base color, I wanna start a little lighter than I normally would um, because then we can apply and add colors on top of that. So I'm gonna do, use a, kind of a hideous green, but let's see how that goes. Generally, when you're working with colors, you don't wanna sit in these totally saturated values. So completely saturated would be anything on the right-hand side here. Um, the kind of desaturated colors kind of live somewhere in the middle. And um, it's just generally nice when you're not working with super duper saturated colors all the time. All right, so that's my first layer, done. So for the second layer, let's do another paint bucket. And this one's going to be my ambient occlusion. So I'm just gonna call this AO. 
So double click on the layer, call it AO. And for this one, we're gonna right click on it, add a black mask. And so now um, everywhere that is black, the color is not applied and we're going to add a generator to this that will apply color anywhere where our model is gray or white. So um, to this black mask, you actually have to click on the black mask, right click again and add a generator. And for this generator, we're going to go down to our properties menu and we're gonna select ambient occlusion. So that should be this one here. Perfect. And so what ambient, the ambient occlusion generator does, and you can see um, right here in the texture, is anywhere that there's kind of crevices or darker areas, we're going to get some shadow applied. Um, areas with natural light on them will be lighter and brighter. Now for this generator, you can play around with global invert. So I'm actually gonna turn this to true. And um, you can see now that this is applying that kind of gray color to my crevices. And that's kind of what I want for this. So that global invert true is really important. Next, it's hard to see exactly what this is doing. So I'm gonna change the color on this layer. So I have to go back to my color swatch tab, click on that and go down to my properties menu and select my base color again. And let's click. Now um, for complementary colors or just kind of to add to a color, I could use um, a nice dark green that will make these areas darker. I could also use something on the opposite side of the spectrum like a dark red or orange that kind of gives an interesting effect. Um, and finally, I could also use like a dark blue. Um, we're going to be multiplying this layer. So, um, so the color you choose here is not the actual color that's gonna turn up. So let me just show you what that looks like. I may choose a dark orange. There we go. And again, I'm selecting from the less saturated colors in the middle. All right, so in Substance Painter, we have options for our layers that is very similar to Photoshop. So normal just means use the color that I've applied, this orange, um, and replace it where the mask is. Um, however, we can apply multiply, and what that does is it takes that orange color and it combines it or multiplies it with the green color to create a new color. And what I like about that is it really does kind of have this nice darkening effect in those crevices. Um, other options, similar, it would be the opposite would be overlaying. And what that does is actually subtract the color from the dark, from the original green. So I'm just gonna use multiply. All right, and I think for my AO, I can just always go back to edit the generators. So let's go back to the mask and then click on the generator itself. And I can change this global balance to be less or more. And I'm just gonna crank mine up a little bit or crank mine down to like 0.35. And that's gonna give me a little more of the shadow effect where I want it. And then again, if you wanted to change this color and just see what kind of effects you can get, this is more of a brighter orange. This is what it would happen if we applied the blue, which is kind of interesting. Um, and then this would be more of just a dark green down here. So I'm thinking I like the blue actually the best. I think it's kind of creating an interesting effect. So I'm gonna go with that. And we can change any of these colors at any time. So don't worry if you're not happy with them quite yet. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do is add a edge highlights layer. So I'm gonna go back to my paint bucket, my add a fill layer. 
going to right click and add a black mask. So anywhere that is black on this layer is not going to have a color yet. And then to that black mask, I'm going to right click and add a generator. So that is down the bottom here. And this generator is going to be for edge highlights. So we have a few options. Um, I like using curvature for this, which areas of high curvature are getting um, that white edge. However, you could also try metal edge. This can be a really nice effect as well. So I'm just gonna use curvature. And you can see that any place that has curvature is getting some um, of this light gray color. So let's change this light gray color. So I'm gonna click on that, click on my base color. And for this, um, I'm thinking I want kind of a, like a nice light yellow or something. There we go. Maybe like a greeny yellow. There we go. Cool. All right, so um, for this base color, you can see that it created this these edge highlights wherever um, there was curvature or strong curvature on this model. So I think that's a really nice effect. And um, we can also use our blending options on this curvature. So we could use overlay um, that combines the two colors together. We could also use screen. So that kind of takes the punch out of the yellow and just makes it um, more light. So that actually is looking pretty good. I don't mind that screen. The other one that we could try is soft light. So that one um, is actually combining the two colors. So I think let's stick with the screen. Okay, so let's rename that layer and let's call that one edge highlights. And now let's add our next layer, which is going to be a top to bottom color gradient. So for this, I'm going to um, add my fill layer, rename it, and let's call this gradient. And for this color gradient, um, let's change the color right away. So it, we could do this anytime. Um, for this one, uh, let's use like the dark blue, how about that? And again, this is going to be multiplied. So let's change this to multiply. And you can see the difference that multiply effects. It really takes those underlying colors that have already been created and combines it with our new color. So um, right click on the color and let's add our black mask and right click on our black mask and um, let's call add a generator. And this generator, we will call it position. Okay, so a couple things to note for this one, we're not seeing, it's actually feeling a little lighter underneath than it is on top. So let's play around with our options. So. First of all, let's change our global invert to true. So notice that this is darker on top and lighter at the bottom. And then when I turn it to true, that reverses it. So now we're back to being lighter on top and darker on the bottom, which is what we're going for. Um, we can also play with our global balance. So notice what's happening here. You can see as I'm adjusting this global balance, it's moving the parts where the actual gradient is showing. So this is a really important step to try and figure out where should this, um, where should this gradient start and stop. And I kind of want mine just underneath so the underneath side is darker. So maybe like 0 0.2, 0 0.3 maybe. And I'm feeling like right now, this is a very dark effect that I just applied. So I can change the um, opacity of this layer and just bring it down so that it's having an effect, but it's not killing all of my color. So let's go down to here to like 40. So you can see I'm 
Got a nice top to bottom gradient, but it's not overpowering. I could also try playing with this color. Um, again, seeing what some browns would do. I'm kind of digging better than the blues. I don't know, the blues is, are, no, well, I'll stick with the blue. Okay, so that's the, um, the top to bottom gradient. And then um, I did want to add some metal edge wear. So this is kind of a extra layer. So let's add a new fill layer. Um, let's double click it and call it edge wear um, metal. I'm gonna right click, add a black mask, right click, add a generator. To that generator, I'm going to add the um, metal edge. There we go. And you can see this is just grabbing those edges and adding some like distressed looking effect, which is pretty cool. So again, I want to change the color on this one. I think I'm going to go with like an orange. You could potentially go for like a silver. Actually, that silver is kind of nice. Yeah, let's go with that. And then um, we can adjust the blending on this layer. So normal is nice. Uh, let's see what multiply does. I do like the multiply just because it kind of combines the two colors together. Um, and then we could reduce the opacity on this. So definitely you can play around with these settings um, to see what looks best for your model. But that's just giving a little more edge wear there. And then the other one that I could ask add is one more fill layer. Let's just call this dirt. Right click on it, add a black mask. Right click and add a generator. And to that generator, let's add dirt. So you can see this dirt is going to have a nice overall dirty effect, um, giving those like imperfections to our model. So for the color for this one, I'm just gonna click on this little swatch. Um, this one could be like a dark, yeah, there we go, something dark. Cool. And then again, let's play around with our layer blending. So if we did multiply, you can see that the two, the red and the green together are giving me this really dark gray. Um, I could definitely play around with the opacity of this, so maybe make it more like 50%. But you can see I'm getting some really good, um, really good dirt effects really simply and fast. All right, so the last layer we're gonna add is our um, baked stylized lighting. So we're gonna add another fill layer. This time we're gonna right click and add a filter, filter right there. Um, this filter, we're gonna click on it and there's two options for um, lighting. So there's a baked lighting environment. There's also a baked stylized lighting. So that's the one we're gonna go for since we're going stylized. And you can see what this does is give us kind of a nice overall top to bottom shade. Um, for this one, I'm gonna change my layer blending to soft light and just reduce the opacity down on this one. So it's just, it's just like that little extra something that adds kind of that lighting effect to your model. Um, and you can see the effects on any of these layers by clicking the little eyeball on and off and deciding if you want more or less of these properties. All right, so now that we have all of these options done, I'm gonna select them all. So just click on the top one and go all the way to my base color. So they're all highlighted. So shift and click on the base color. And then we're gonna click on add group or this little file folder. Oh, I guess I didn't put it in there. So let's grab them all again. And I'm just gonna click and drag them into the folder. And let's close this folder and rename it um, 
stylized green. All right, so if I wanna use this material in the future, I'm gonna right click on this and save it as a stylized, uh, create a smart material from it. So let's click that. And you can see that shows up now in my asset library. Now these stylized um, materials are fantastic. Um, you can use them on their own like this, or if there is some um, material that you really like, say it's a super realistic material like this, I th think there's like this steel paint chip dry. What you can do is combine these materials together. So I'm just gonna add this steel paint chipped dry on top, and then I'm gonna reduce its opacity. Uh, so maybe do a multiply on it, and then reduce its opacity to like maybe 10% or 20%. So by combining realistic and stylized, you can get a lot of really interesting effects. Um, I think I actually like my material. Um, it's kind of nice combining them. Um, so last thing that I wanted to show you is just how to paint individual pieces. Um, so I'll show you that in the next video. Thanks class.